Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. <laughs> it is um, April 3rd, believe it or not. It's like 40 degrees here in New York City, so I can barely believe it's um, April 3rd. But uh, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. And um, we have Vanessa and Dirk and Leah, and you guys will introduce yourselves and pronounce your last names correctly here in just a second. Mm -hmm. Um, who are, uh, I'm so delighted to talk to in person. Um, these are folks who I consider part of my community um, because they're part of the P2PU community, Peer-to-Peer -peer University, and um, they've been changing things around over there, so we thought we'd track them down and see what's going on. Um, that's one way to, to joke with you guys a little bit. <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I, I at, at the DML conference in, in Chicago, um, there was a release of the new badging, the badging platform, um, and I was um, joking with Vanessa earlier that we're catching them between sprints. So the platform's out; you can mess with it, and we're going to take a, a, a trip around it. But I think there's another sprint happening over the next uh, four weeks. And I love that it's a new word to me. So um, I, I get to use it as many times as I want today. Anyway, uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, and uh, let's see what we can learn together. Leah, why don't you introduce yourself and um, say where you hail from and how you got involved in P2PU and just a little more about yourself. And when we get around to Vanessa and Dirk, um, maybe you guys could tell us. I want to kind of start with. Uh, big principles of P2PU and then how that fits badges, if that makes sense. So there's some okay. transparent planning for you there. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Okay. Well, um, yeah, so for a brief introduction, um, my name is Leah McVie, and I reside in Buffalo, New York. And uh, I consider myself a do-it-yourself learning advocate and I'm also an instructional designer, too, who straddles all sorts of lines in higher ed, um, from faculty, student, to administrator. So it's um, interesting being a do-it-yourself learning advocate in the higher ed environment. And I'm always uh, fighting for, of course, more attention to the do-it-yourself and informal learning. But um, I also am a co-founder of TEDx Buffalo, which I, I think aligns a lot with, uh, you know, kind of my open um, advocacy. And of course, I found my myself um, on P2PU probably a few years ago, and I was just uh, discovering open badges. Um, so now I consider, you know, as part of my, I'm also a PhD student, as part, part of my PhD focus, um, not just in formal learning, but also these alternative forms of credit that are coming down the pipeline and um, are uh, causing chaos in higher education. I think uh, a lot of the um, senior level management in higher ed is trying to figure out what to do with this, but P2PU has blended a lot of the uh, higher ed concerns, inviting the higher ed community. That's the wonderful thing about it. And also um, with the rest of the open community is they are you know, willing to shake hands with higher ed, and we're just waiting for higher ed to figure out how to, you know, shake hands back. Um, but last year, I created a uh, challenge on P2PU called Open Badges 101, and it is now uh, being assimilated as we speak into the, <laughs> hopefully, the school of badges, and we're just putting the final touches on uh, Open Badges 102, and then um, we also have another more programming higher level Open Badges course coming down the pipeline, and I'm doing that in conjunction with uh, Peter Ross Thorne, uh, who's also uh, on P2P floating around and that's where I met Vanessa and Dirk and everybody in the community has been fantastic and just so welcoming so thank you. Leah, where do you actually work though? I, mean, I work at Who Kenesha's. pays your check? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well that, that's another interesting story. Um, no, Kenesha's College pays my check. It's one of the 28 Jesuit institutions in the country. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the one here in Buffalo, New York and uh, I also am a grad assist at um, my school where I'm going for my PhD, Union, Union Institute and University, which is in Cincinnati. And uh, yeah, so that's what I do. Okay, cool. Very nice. Monica, welcome. Thank you for coming early tonight. Hey guys. Today. 
Hello. And Jane's about to join us too. Monica, introduce yourself a little bit, please. Uh, that's just where we were. Leah had just started to introduce herself so when you came. Okay, I'm in Colorado, and I've been working with youth the last four to five years, experimenting with the intersection of city and school, seeking to redefine public education as a means to equity. Right on. Monica, I think we met at DML last year. You're a friend of Bud's and Zach's and... Yeah, great. Cool. And Jane Park is trying to join us there as well. But um, Vanessa, why don't you just yourself and Dirk yourself, and then Jane. Hi, Jane. Uh, I'm Vanessa Generelli, the learning lead at Pierre Superior University. Uh, I started my uh, my discovery process at PDPU through running poetry courses on the site. Um, which led me to want to learn more about how people learn. Um, and uh, I just finished up a graduate degree in educational technology. Um, my role at PPU is to focus on all things learning on the site. So I work on, I work on badges, and I work on research, um, and I work on curriculum design and, and, and instructional design to help everyone who's uh, putting together courses at, at PPU. And this is Dirk. Dirk. Hi, everyone. Jet lagged, barely in one piece, Dirk, who's the tech lead at PDPU. Yeah, so, like Vanessa said, I'm Dirk. <laughs> and if you want to pronounce my true name, it's Ace. Ace. Al Ace. Almost like Ace. <laughs> but it's spelled differently. And oh. yeah, so I'm involved with PDPU from a technical perspective. And yeah, like, I think. I really deeply care about things being open and doing things in an open and transparent way. And in general, I just make sure that what we need to, the tools we need to build and the things that we need to be able to facilitate education in an open online way gets built and gets used in a way that makes sense for everyone. He's also a hero. I don't know if you guys knew that. He's a superhero. <laughs> Very cool. Well, um, so it's it's so nice to have you all here. Vanessa, could you go further and explain PDPU a little bit more? Maybe give a little bit of its history, but mainly the, like the the big principles. Like what? How do? How does? There are three things. Openness we've hit a lot, but the other two, and then and then we can kind of fix fit the badging conversation into those three. I think maybe. Um, I, I thought I thought what I might do, you know, PP, uh, three three main values, uh, core values are openness, um, community, and peer learning. Um, and P, in the in the space of badges, uh, PPU has uh, is a thought leader in this space. We've been producing badges for more than three years, uh, and we we published a white paper with Mozilla, which is now like the seminal paper on the subject. Um, and and this, as we as we approached our third iteration of badges, um, because we were grantees from the Digital Media and Learning to create a badge platform, um, can everyone see Google, the Google Drive? Can everyone go to the Google Drive part of the of the Hangout? Yes, and I will. And if you put it on yours, I will put it into the recording of this. I think. Okay. Let's see what happens. And um, and I'm gonna go to full screen. Okay, so uh, so this is. Do you, are you viewing? Are you able to view refocusing and regrouping? Um, are you on there yet? Yeah, I am there. <laughs> How this works with recording is interesting, um, but let's see. So we we don't see it on our screen yet. And it's not on your little screen yet. So maybe you have, have you selected it? You're in drive. Do you see it now? So if we cl click on drive, problem is we're not going to see it in the, um, in the recording. Well, you know what? Um, that's that's just fine because there's only a couple of slides, and we can post it to the we can post it with the 
it's on SlideShare, so the slides are up. Okay. Um, so uh, now can you see refocusing and regrouping? Wait, I don't see anything on Drive. I clicked on Drive and I don't see anything. So we have to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> Probably we're not the only ones who have to figure this out. Uh, <laughs> Vanessa, shouldn't we can maybe do a screen share? Okay. Yeah, I think if you do that, that will work. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Try to All do a right, screen share. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's do this. Start screen share. There we go. Okay. So. Um, yeah, that works. It's not as beautiful, but it works. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Good. So, um, so there we I, go. As I mentioned, uh, thought leaders in the space, and as we as we began our third iteration of badges uh, in June of last year, we we took a step back and we thought about whether or not we were measuring the right things um, because. We had been measuring things like usage stats and and recognizing fills through rubrics, average ratings, um, and we also we also had been manually implementing badges, as Paul knows, to increase the efficiency of them. That's how Dirk and I got to know each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, because there was manual implementation, it, there, it didn't actually lead to to much experimentation. Um, and so we concluded that that P2P loves the squishy stuff, which means that, that we want to <laughs> that we want to recognize which, val which value uh, is that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, but but we wanted to 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 recognize certain values that we have. Uh -huh. um, in, in addition to openness, community, and peer learning, we actually do have a theory of learning of how people learn. Um, and and we wanted to recognize those design principles in whatever assessment program that we created. Uh, so for the design priorities for this iteration of badges um, were that feedback is a kind of assessment. Um, when you diagnose where someone is at and you you give recommendations to help them um, and suggestions for other things to try out with their projects, that is a way of assessing their skills. Um, we also wanted to focus on qualitative feedback to improve projects because we, we, we noticed that in our rubrics, in our previous iteration, when, when folks got that feedback, an average score from their rubric, they didn't really know what that meant, and there was no way for them to, to use that information to improve it. So we really wanted to focus on, on more granular, individualized feedback to in all in the service of helping a learner improve their project. Um, additionally, we wanted to we wanted to prompt iteration of those projects. So so we wanted to start a sort of conversation um, around projects uh, to help people learn. And in that way we wanted to nurture mentorship uh, through sustained feedback relationships. Um, so those, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, let me look if you don't mind interrupting as we go. <laughs> you first. What? Oh, good. Please, please. That's Bye. me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I just uh, you said granular uh, feedback. Is that the same as prompt and iter iterative? Uh, or... I would actually say there are different things. Like granular yeah, what... feedback is like individual to me would mean individual feedback. Um, like like on a rubric. If you have a, a rubric line item for like creativity and someone gets a three out of four, uh, previously there wasn't like a complete rubric to, to see what you were doing well and what you needed help with. So uh -huh. it's, more, it's a more uh, contextual, I guess, instead of granular, contextual way of delivering feedback. So there, there are no rubrics anymore? Is that... No rubrics. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, uh, would you like to see how these design priorities play out? Yeah, but while we're interrupting, okay. <laughs> sorry, um, Jane, do you want to introduce yourself, and then I, I want to, if that's okay, Vanessa, we'll keep interrupting and kind of go slowly that way. I just have the slides up, so I don't, I don't see you. <laughs> oh, I see. That's true. Yeah, so you can't see me. Go wait, wait. All right, all right. All right. Uh, Jane, introduce yourself, please, and tell us what open sure. open means to you. There you go. 
<laughs> okay, sure. Um, sorry, I'm late. Um, so I'm Jane Park, and I'm the project manager. Um, I'm coordinating, uh, kind of community coordinating behind the School of Open, which is one of the other schools um, at Pew2Pew. Pew. I'm sure a lot of you are part of the School of Ed, um, or maybe one or two of you <laughs> as far as School of Ed, since there's only a few of us on this call. Um, and the School of Open is all about um, focusing specifically on the domain of openness and what that means. So open educational resources, open licenses, like Creative Commons licenses, um, open science data, and how people can learn about them and incorporate them into their professions and their fields. And so that's all the courses at School of Open focus on various aspects of openness as they apply to different um, fields. Um, what does open mean to me? Um, <laughs> open means so many different things, and I think we're trying to do too much right now as part of the School of Open. Um, but um, I think it means, for one thing, kind of legal reuse of materials at the same time, um, the way you actually kind of work, so working transparently, um, the way you gov govern kind of an organization or a project. Um, I think for me that's like the most important aspect of open because I'm sort of coordinating this project and I want to make sure that the community um, gets heard. So I, I have a way to get, I, I know this could get too philosophical, but I do want to start big. If if we could, and I know we're 20 minutes in, we're still starting. But, uh, like, what is the squishy stuff? And what is um, the emphasis on peer? And what is the, uh, here, so here's here's a more specific way I, I'm thinking about it. It's in this realm of badges. Some people call them digital badges. And some people call them open badges. And some people call them open digital badges. You know, I told And then, you know, the Boy Scouts have had badges for a long time. And 4-H has, too. So, like, what what's significant about open and open badges? And is that connected to the other kind of openness that PDPU represents? Is that too big a question? Well, um, well let, me, let, me, let me break it down into a few parts, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Dirk and I together built badges.p2pu.org as a standalone application. So what that means is that anyone can create a badge, um, and because we're we're the badge platform uh, for creation. And then as of May first, you'll be able to. It's weird. I'm seeing myself in stereo. I know. That's cool. Uh, I <laughs> Uh, as of as of May first, uh, the new badges will push to the OBI. Will push to the backpack. At the same time, uh, and I think I mentioned this, we definitely have like a point of view uh, on on how this learning should happen. Um, and the squishy stuff uh, has to do with um, has to do with project based learning. So instead of instead of the conversation being about badges at it, it, badges.p2pu, the, the conversation is about getting feedback on projects that you love. And the feedback is a relationship or a conversation that started, and the badge is a representation of that mentorship, that project, and that evolution, as opposed to something that people are motivated to accomplish for the badge. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. That's an interesting distinction. I, others jump in here, though, if we could. I, I also want to throw in, um, just to kind of clarify Later, for folks, um, that uh, with the, the P2PU badges, uh, you don't necessarily have to have a course or challenge on P2PU to use them. So it's just kind of, you know, it, it is like Vanessa said, um, they are a, a, a provider, but you don't necessarily have to use it just solely within uh, P2PU. For me, I think the beauty is, you know, we often talk about the learner and uh, whether you're in the open badges community and you call them earners or you're in the P2PU community and you call them learners, um, you guys have <laughs> I mean, go on and on about the terminology differences. And even, Paul, you mentioned the, you know, do we call them digital badges? Do we call them open badges? Do we call them badges? Um, you know, I think we all do have to, you know, and there are plenty of documents out there. Vanessa mentioned one where we, where the entire community is trying to come up with um, terminology uh, and a consistent terminology. 
one of the reasons for that, which I think is important, I know I'm going off topic, but one of the reasons why that is important is so that when we, as we are, you know, all advocates for this movement, we need to use the same language in speaking to others um, so that they don't also get confused. You know, well, is it digital badges or open badges or badges? Um, but as I was saying before, we have to talk about the, the, the learners and the earners um, in this scenario. I think another beauty of um, the open community and being able to um, create courses or take courses is that you can teach without being a certified expert and then you can also learn from somebody who isn't necessarily a certified expert but has a lot of experience which I think feeds back into the community as well so this whole open movement is about allowing anybody any age any experience level to come in and learn or earn but it also keeps that door open for folks who um, would also like to teach others and share their skill and expertise with others. Great. I'm waiting for others to jump in. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, here's, you know, um, and I don't mind use, using my uh, sort of I, my my feeling about a lot of the conversation around badges is there's there's not enough people actually getting messy with it, and 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 that so and and one of the wonderful things about being a teacher is that is you, you get to be you get to kind of say okay here here's some incomplete ideas here's here's a controversy let me jump in and see what we can make out of it right and so that's how I I kind of approach things and have. One of my concerns around badges could be expressed that I want them to count, I want them to matter, right? And so I worry that some of the some of the um, more open stuff, in the end, how how does it end up um, having significance? You know, mattering to enough people. Go ahead, you can jump in there <laughs> <laughs> I'll jump in because you yeah. know I, I I also feel the same way and I mm. think as a learner or earner why do something without it benefiting you so I think one of a, a part of that advocacy is advocating um, also to employers or institutions to accept badges and to figure out a way you know we have to educate on how you know ways in which they can accept these badges but two for the learners and earners out there there has to be some sort of um, uh, an educational movement on how to display these badges and how to have these conversations um, with the people you are presenting these badges to. I, mm -hmm. I would agree with that Lee. I would also say that um, for the P2PU's badge platform what we've done is we've created this portfolio like experience where once you click through to what someone has done to receive that badge there is proof in the pudding about what the project was how they iterated upon it how they took feedback and whether or not they gave feedback to other people so really the badge just stands for the suite of evidence that anyone can go and sort of and and digest for themselves whether or not the project has mastered that skill. So and, that, and, that, and that is one of the distinctions between open badges and digital badges. I've heard right that it has that suite of it's a nice word suite of evidence of conversation around the work. So well, I, I mean, I I know that to be the case specifically with P2P use design. Mm -hmm. um, other, I mean, other other badge programs I've seen uh, be like have to do with content mastery or or other skills, but I know that to be the case with our platform. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, 
So, uh, but address my other concern, and then we will get into the details of P2P use badges, I promise. But uh, the big issues feel important to me too, though. But so, so I set up, I set up like, and worked with Dirk, and you guys are were wonderful in, in helping me set up this summer, because because I needed a way to um, identify skills within an English class, and then I broaden it to some other uh, disciplines as well, um, that that would identify competencies and these competencies are related to common core standards and when kids earn five of them and three levels you know it's this real kind of um, now that you've changed everything it doesn't work anymore but that's okay it's it it, it was all it, it was all it was all it was all no seriously it doesn't because it was all it was all a proof of a proof of concept anyhow but but okay, so there's that side of it. I think you can kind of get a picture of that. Then you have Chad Sansing, um, who who does these um, this wonderful stuff with with students. And then um, as they're doing more self directed work, um, at the end of that work, they they create their own badges, right? And and I just feel like the P2PU platform might be. Um, an open enough place for both of us to play around, um, but so but I worry about the eighth graders who are creating their own badges to represent like um, you know I I learned I learned um, how not to you know fight on the on the playground today, uh, like how does that connect up to the you know the stuff that counts, and and then how can you see the PDPU platform helping us work together in that. Is that, I asked too many questions, I'm not. <laughs> well, uh, what, yeah. what demonstrations of understanding would you ask of a student who has learned not to fight on the playground? But, but given, given what you've said so far, the, that, that eighth graders mentor and that eighth graders, whoever that is, who peer, Right, I don't mm -hmm. peer mentor, and that eighth grader would work that out together in some way. I mean, and and that's uh, that is sort of for them to. In when when we look at learning goals, when I look at curriculum design, I think about it as starting out with what what learning goals, what what actually do you want people to learn. And then you choose the content and the activities that are in line with what you want people to learn. And then you select assessments that modify those learning goals. So for some for an activity like that, like the the um, a sort of uh, intangible. Uh, I, sorry, are you trying to interrupt me, Paul? Yeah, it's just trying to give a fairer example. But go ahead. Okay. okay well, yeah. uh, uh, another example would be oh oh you're you're waiting for me to <laughs> sorry <laughs> we can yeah, maybe, mean, I, we could use your poetry example let's use that i i mean i love that badge can okay. you explain that badge and then that, that'll get us back into p2p use badge system sure. a little more yeah um so uh I like its for, simplicity. Yeah, good. Well, thank you. Uh, for the for the PDPU poetry course, uh, which is has been called in various iterations, hack this poem, steal this poem. Uh, the the fundamental basis of the course is that we we learn by stealing, uh, and uh, I consistently ask learners to go out into the world and find a poem and decide what makes it good. What makes it work? And from there, we, we parse out, well, OK, voice and tone, imagery, internal rhyme, assonance, consonance, alliteration. Um, and everything that they point out about what makes a poem good, in their examples that they found, we make a collaborative rubric from there. And that's how we decide. Um, and that's how we evaluate each other's poems. But the assignments are for learners to go out into the world, find a poem that they like, and then rewrite it from their point of view. And uh, and that's something that Paul, your student, did um, recently. And uh, and as part of the assignment, you need to identify 
parts of the poem that work and how you deployed those same those same skills. Uh, and so when in the badge, it's what I asked for is the previous iteration of the poem, the, the, the sort of a source material, and then your version of the poem, and a bit of reflection on what you took away from, from the poem, the original poem, and, and infused into your own piece. So that's the, I ask for the project and the evidence. Um, and it, at PPU, the, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen and we can actually walk through this example. Uh, Paul, do you wanna put the, um, when you share your screen, it will appear. It will appear in the video. Okay. So. Start screen share. Yep. Okay. So here we are at badges.p2pu.org, and uh, and these are um, some lovely badges that users have created, including Paul's most recent badges. Um, and I got a notification that uh, one of Paul's students had submitted a, a project for Poetry Thief. Um, and I've only done, I've only done a, um, a cursory reading of this first version, but, um, but the, he submitted the poem and, and specked out, the poems and specked out what steps he took to accomplish this project and gave evidence um, for, for uh, the fact that he had accomplished the project. And no, a little bit. detail. The um the steps taken that's about all you can write right there's a limit on that yeah we're working on that meaning it's part of you want to so, extend that or I'm just curious what the thinking is around that so um Dirk actually Dirk yeah Dirk go ahead <laughs> well I think the last time we spoke about this me and Vanessa like the thinking behind it is that most of the work you do should actually go to like some external URL and then steps taken is is kind of just like reflecting on that. So you're just trying to prompt a bit of reflection on the work that you've done. But on a technical aspect there is like some small improvements that you want to make mm -hmm. just in terms of like the formatting and stuff of what you can put in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In addition to I think increasing the character count somewhat. Yeah but, probably. Yeah. But but I think but like Sorry, Dirk. Um, there's a question uh, in the chat area. Is the current poetry workshop the breaking the rules of poetry workshop? Um, yeah. Or if you can just if you can paste in the link to the current workshop in the chat, and then I will repaste it. Or if you want to in the TTT chat area. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Let's see. What is the most recent version? Well, it's hack this poem, and and I'll pull it up here and put it in the chat. So the one the one thought as you're doing that though um, is that what's interesting is that the badge is separate from the from the course, right? Well, yeah. That's that's something that we discussed uh, uh, previously in the in the call. What we've what we've done is we've created a standalone application. So if you want to create a badge for any event, a uh, particular project, you can do so. But one of one of the features that we're working on for this next sprint, I know that that you love this in our Scrum meeting this morning, um, <laughs> is that we'll be integrating uh, the badges with p2pu.org. Um, so you'll have the ability to attach a badge to your course and stick it in the navigation. So uh, so you can do you know module one, module two, two apply for the badge, module three, module four. What what do you mean by the modules? I don't quite understand. Oh, the, it's, so, a, it's a content module. So when you guys create tasks or oh okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Maybe just to add on to that, the integration we're planning is like not, we're not planning like actually tight integration. Things like having a badge being automatically awarded when someone completes a challenge mm -hmm. is not really something that, that we're currently looking at supporting with the new courses, but having more like prompting the user to submit something for that. By the way, I totally... 
I totally agree with that. Um, Mozilla has this thing in their um, webmaker stuff, where and um, where I, I'm getting badges all the time, and I don't know why I am, and it's like what? <laughs> I don't I don't quite understand why you know why I'm getting all those badges. Just and anyway, so I I like that there is the uh, the connection to some reflection on the work as well. Is that is that the em emphasis here too? There emphasis on reflection, and also it helps prime the feedback that you give someone. Um, because something that we recognized when in our previous iteration was that when someone looked at your project for the first time, they didn't know what they were looking at. Like if you if you had said you know um, uh, for WebMaker or not for WebMaker but for WebMaking 101, like transfer yeah. files from an FTP, it, people who had you know people went to review badges but they didn't know exactly what they were looking at. So, um, so that's why we want to create not only some reflection, but help to help the the expert understand the context of the learner. Like, what were you trying to do? What what were you thinking about? And that way, you can give more focused feedback as far as other resources to look at, other poems to read, other poetry exercises to try, because you know you have a little bit more contextual information from the learner. So maybe go back um, and step us through from the beginning. Um, I'm a student. I, I come on here. I, I look at badges.pdpu.org. Um, how do I? What do I do first? Um, I just finished. Let's let me pose it this way. I just finished a project that I love. Do I go and try to find a badge that fits that project? Actually. Or, or how do you want it? If you want to do it a different way, go ahead. Yeah, let's do it a different way. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll get back to my question, don't worry. Uh, all right. So um, everyone, uh, you are welcome to go visit this this badge, the Pet Hobby Project badge. I'm going to put it in the chat here. Um, and this is a badge in which Dirk is an expert, OK? Uh, and uh, so everyone has a Pet Hobby Project, right? How do, uh, I know, how do I know that he's an expert in this? Is it down at the bottom? Um, it is down at the bottom. There's Dirk with a handlebar mustache. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, and uh, and one of the do, 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 do. and I choose I choose to submit a project for this pet pet hobby project. And I I've been working on 3D printing. Um, so the name of my masterpiece Wait, is. I'm sorry. Given given that some people may be listening to this instead of seeing it, would you mind reading it because it's short enough? You can earn. Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. We call this Nifty Badge Pet Hobby Project because folks with this badge can, you can earn this badge by showing us your pet hobby project. It should be something that you have done outside of work that's useful to at least you, making you happy <laughs> once it's being useful and completed. Yes, we want you to finish that project before showing it off. Um, and, uh, and recently, I have become interested in 3D drafting and 3D printing. Um, I've taken up uh, fiddling with Rhino. And I, uh, I wanted to make uh, a Christmas tree topper, um, so I, uh, so I started um, drafting in Rhino, and I found this, I found this friend who, uh, who made three D, three D objects in Etsy. Can you guys see this blog post? Yes. Okay, so, uh, so I visited him at his hackerspace, and we printed, we drew together, we drew. And printed this this three D this three uh three D printed Christmas tree topper, <laughs> um and it's kind of busted but it's done, and um so I'm you, gonna you printed that on a three D printer wow I did it's cool so how many different parts were there <laughs> it's two different parts um and I I sort of jankily glued them together uh so here I am submitting submitting my my project I submitted the URL which there's a blog post about it. Um, what steps did I take to complete this project? Designed 3D objects in Rhino. Printed using MakerBot. And then glued together at the top. I'm doing this uh, extremely cursorily. That's fine. Uh, and second thoughts. What might I do differently next time? Not print it as two pieces. Um, 
but instead have a stronger base as part of the design. And um, and let's see, let's download this image real quick. And so we can make it the cover. And add some tags to 3D printing. Uh, Christmas. <laughs> uh, um, and so if you're listening to this, uh, Vanessa is filming in, in uh, different forms on a, uh, right? Okay. And can I ask um, a technical question? <laughs> Sorry. So in the, in the um, description, is there any way to make the links live? I know you said that was in the next sprint, but I just wanted to ask if that is in your plan. The links live? So in other words, it, in the, um, I'm not sure I'm saying the right thing. In the description, the steps I took to make this, mm -hmm. um, the links, I, I put a link in, um, or Shamar's piece there. He put a link there, and but the link is not a live link. So, in other words, I, I like the submission form, but I always want more places to put more links <laughs> to other things. So you can kind of see the steps of things. Sorry. Yeah, so let me quickly, that's one of the things I could really mention just now as well. It's just like actually supporting rich text uh -huh. in the stack. And that will just, will probably just like automatically linkify any URL that you put in there. Okay, so that's on the list. All right. Yeah. And that, cool. Trello, that, that Trello board is, is open if you want to track our progress. Um, let me let me put it um, in the chat. So if you guys want to peek in and see what the heck we're actually doing, um, but okay. So now I've submitted this project, and it's version one. And you uh -huh. guys, you guys can see it. Um, and the lesson learned lessons learned were not produced to pieces. And so since Dirk is the expert, Dirk has been notified. And actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share, I think, Dirk, do you want to share your screen? Can you do that now? Uh, I'm already doing that. OK, so now Dirk is sharing his screen. OK. So, yeah. so you can now see that, that project will, sorry, can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Okay, cool. So you can see the project is there. And there is version one submitted by Vanessa. And my PC is having a hard time doing everything it needs to do. Okay, so now I can give feedback. So. There you go. Yeah, so uh, now I can give some feedback. This is great. <laughs> Love how you. Uh, so, and, and the feedback you have a green, yellow, and red. Is that yeah. right? Kudos. No. What are the. I can't see them. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's, it's a little blurry, but yeah. um, so the the feedback is stepped out. We, at PDP, we like to give red, yellow, green feedback, which is uh, the green is kudos, uh, yellow is concerns, and uh, or yellow is questions and red is concerns. Um, so it's a way to really focus the feedback um, because what we want to do is we want to train people to give better feedback. So we found that this is a this is a good way. Um, to prime to prime that experience, Jane asks, "Can there be more than one expert?" Yes. Once you have the badge, you become an expert, and you can review other people's submissions. And we have a delicious suite of email notifications letting you know that you're an expert and that you are that you can uh, award badges to other people. And you can fill in all three of those at the same time. Mm -hmm. I yeah. So. Um, Dirk is uh, Dirk is about you guys. This is like this is serious. Dirk's about to award me this badge here. So wait, but you could decide not to award the badge and give the feedback. I yeah. just want to be clear. Okay. So so let's speak. But sorry, sorry. Just uh, play that out a little bit. Um, if I if I give the feedback and decide not to click the award badge, what happens? Um. Well, what happens is actually, uh, you you get a notification. The learner gets the notification. 
notification that they have feedback and they can go back and they're invited to revise it and resubmit. Um, and the, the versions travel with the project. So this is version one. If, if I am not awarded the badge and I get Dirk's feedback and I revise and resubmit it, it'll, it'll be version two. And the project will always travel with the comments, the feedback, and the different iterations of the project. And once the badge is awarded, I'll be able to see all those versions, too? Oh, you, everyone can see all the versions. <coughs> Sorry. Say that again? Everyone of... can always see the versions of the projects? OK. So, yeah. so Jane or Leah, you guys have questions? Jump in? Or you're just enjoying the tour. Go ahead. <laughs> Dirk, go ahead. <laughs> I've already uploaded a badge, so I, I'm yeah. good. I have lots of questions for Dirk and Vanessa that I've been bugging them about on the the groups forum. So I would encourage anybody with any questions but about We'd um, love to hear some badges. of those here again though. But go ahead, Dirk. <laughs> okay. Finish. Yeah. Well the 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 Wait, one question okay. I, I had was once you have a, a, a course, how do you link these two babies together? So, They're working on that one. Yeah, I, I know they are, but how can I do it right now? <laughs> you know, I did it by by making a making a, a clipping a, an image of the badge and then and then putting that onto the bottom of of the uh, <laughs> like in a task at the very last task or something. Or I just put it at the bottom of the task. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's one. One notion. But if we don't have um, participant emails, how will we award the badges? They're, they'll create the accounts integrate from P2PU to badges at P2PU. Okay, and that was the the key piece I didn't have. Okay. Um, so Jane says, can there be more than one expert? Yes. What if I only I want to be able to award the badge? Can I limit who becomes an expert? Uh, not limit, because what we want is for as many people to have these learning experiences as possible. What you can, what, what we design, the design of expertise is that if you are an expert, you want to preserve the integrity of the badge. So that's why only experts can award the badge to learners. Well, how do you become an expert, though? Because I'm looking at the badge, and there's no place for me to review it. Can only the first person who created the badge assign the other experts, or? Fine, but um, okay. Let me let me step back a little bit. Dirk created this badge. He is the expert. If I get if I if I get this badge, I also become an expert. But because Dirk ah. created this badge. He has some. He he wants to preserve the integrity of it, so that's why it's these mentorship relationships that are a series of conversations. Make sense? Right. So then, so say I create a CC license expert badge, and mm -hmm. I create it. Somebody applies for it, and they become a CC license. They get awarded the badge, so they are now also an expert. They can award that badge to somebody else. But do I, have, as the original expert or whatever creator, do I have veto power? Or how is the integrity of that badge retained if, for example, an organization wants to be the only one behind the sponsor, you know, awarding of a certain badge that's organization related? Like, how would that be managed? And we have, by the way, come full circle back to the, back to um, PDPU principles here, it seems to me. But go ahead. <laughs> Well, ahead, and, yeah. and, uh, and the way that Philip and I have discussed this is that because the badge is just a sim is a symbol of the work anyway, um, it, it, it's a symbol of the work that you've accomplished in the project. We have this layer of protection with expertise, but we have this layer of protection and integrity with the fact that you can click back to the project itself and see if someone has mastered that. Really, the badge is is the last point, and it undergirds the conversation, the projects, and the understanding that has taken place. So that's how we see these two these two community safeguards: is that it's really a portfolio and a conversation, and experts want to maintain the integrity of what they've invested their their time and effort into. Okay, so at this point, it's all open. 
open and anyone who gets a badge becomes an expert and can assign that badge. So there's no way to limit who assigns the badge or make it kind of, you know, However, official organizational sponsorship. Let me just finish that by saying that you can model the behavior of what good feedback is and you can press people a little hard uh, in by not awarding the badge and encourage them to do more work and in modeling that behavior one would hope that you would find that kind of feedback delivery to others but I'll let yeah. I, I think like with the previous badges as well but you basically run one of two risks mm -hmm. and the one risk you run is that like the the badge gets diluted by low quality projects that's mm -hmm. being submitted and you know like the overall value of the badge goes down whereas the other like risk that you're running is that no one actually cares about a badge and like no one reviews projects mm -hmm. and no one awards the badge and I think for for this iteration we kind of like previously we had a problem where like there was a lot of submissions and no one reviewed it mm -hmm. and there was even like a lot of submissions that was completely off and there was no way of like pointing the person in the right direction whereas with this iteration I think we're kind of like willing to take the risk of maybe having like if we, it is possible for people to kind of like submit bad projects and award badges for it. But we're hoping that we can like just cultivate a bit more of a community around a badge and around a skills as well. Okay. Um, but one project could potentially have multiple reviews and then my maybe bad review of something will stand right next to a, someone else's good review. And so they can see kind of disparity. Well, yeah, and uh, you you might give someone a really, really, a really tough review, and in their next iteration, they might have listened to it and and said and and integrated that feedback and made the project that much better. So I, I, I yes, in some there, there similar questions come up. Um, on, on the uh, you know the creation of courses, right? Um, like who can create courses and 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 that kind of question. Um, there is a there is a re report abuse button that seems like a. Does that ever get used? <laughs> not not like. Do you know what button I'm talking about? It it does seem to be so so at at DML I was having a conversation with a um, high school teacher who said you know I could never use P2PU in in my district because like kids could make anything um, and I wanted to encourage her to think that there is a community that kind of makes makes that not happen in some way um, and then you do have this backup of anybody can hit that report abuse button um, and and then the community can deal with it. Uh, yeah, go ahead. One of the things that we're also planning in the next sprint is basically incorporating uh, like a specific administrator or curator mm -hmm. like user role. Sure. And, and that, that's basically, I think maybe Jane, it doesn't address your concern, but it does address the concern of having something that's like absolutely spam or something that's offensive or inappropriate and being able to delete other badges of projects that, that like, I mean, that's a serious violation of those mm -hmm. or one of those three things. But I think like, the ability to like, veto a badge isn't something that we that we really thought about or considered. Well, and 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 Philip and Philip and I in the community have discussed that some people will just create bad badges, but we need to give people the freedom to experiment because we can't dictate. We don't think we know everything. We need to give people the latitude to try some stuff, and and some stuff is going to work and not. Um, I I had I had a question in the kind of different direction, which is, what if I already have a mentor, and that mentor is not on PDPU, and I've done this work, and I want them to review it? Uh, they, could, they could create 
uh, they could either create the badge themselves. Uh, and so then... you could go to your mentor and say, go create this badge in PDPU for me. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Good. That's what you were saying. <laughs> Is there another way? <laughs> uh, you could, you, um, yeah, that's the way I would do it. That's the way I would do it. Uh-huh. Okay. But if the badge exists already, I wonder how they they would have to get that badge somehow. Mm -hmm. They could probably do that though, right? That, and that's that's worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, I actually love the kind of thinking that peer pushes you to do. Um, so so I mean, so for example, what that just did for me was, if a badge exists already and I have a mentor, and I'm saying to that mentor. I just learned about the um, Pythagorean theorem, and you, you're an expert in this, um, and I want you to review it, but you're not on PDPU yet. That expert would have to go into PDPU, become a peer in some way, right? In, in that, they would have to kind of demonstrate on there that they have they have this expertise um, by, by quickly filling out this form and, and making some link to their expertise in some way. Mm -hmm. And then they'd be able to review else in the community. If does that, then they'd be able to review mine. Right? Is that that would work that way too, right? right. Which is, I mean, it it is a little. It does. It's not a. Re, it's it's a really big thing. You guys are are making us do in schools. You know that. Like outside of school, this all makes sense, but throwing it back into school, it really messes our heads up. In good ways. Glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Paul, are you going to leave our contact information up with the with the? I will have it all over the place. Yeah, um, which specifically do you mean, though? Uh, where how you can get a hold of us uh, at pdpu.org. Um, yep. Or here. So go to pdpu.org and and look around, and you'll find everybody. <laughs> I mean that's really true, but um, yes, when I when I publish this, I'll, I'll put up some information like that. Right on. Um, cool. So, do you, do you want to kind of, kind of break out what the next sprint is going to do a little more? I mean, I think you've more or less covered where you are now, um, and I think it is a lot of fun to jump in and, and play with. Uh, but yeah. Look, I'm an expert, guys. <laughs> oh, you're an expert now. Yeah, I'm an expert now because I made a Christmas tree topper. Um, in the next spring, we'll be making. Uh, I, oh, by the way, I had a question about that. Sorry. <laughs> how do we know? How do we know what made you happy? How do we know we, what made me happy? I mean, isn't the isn't the um, isn't ha that you're doing a hob a, a project <laughs> or a hobby that made you happy? Uh, how do I we know what made you happy? I didn't include that effective dimension of my learning. <laughs> uh, but, so at any rate, if I'm an expert in here, I'm going to ask you to add a little bit of that. Okay, that works for me. Um, in the next sprint, uh, we'll be we'll be working on certain improvements, um, specifically with the the integrating badges into p2pu.org. We're going to include a rich text editor with the feedback. Um, OBI. Yeah, we, oh, pushing to OBI is very important. You'll be able to push your badges to the to the backpack oh. by May first. Uh, give more legitimacy to the expert. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. We're, and then there's some some like look and feel things that we're working on, um, as far as amendments to the dashboard and uh, adding avatars there, the favicon. What else is in there? What small things? Small uh, things. The, f the rich text for the feedback. Rich text for the feedback. So things and like also bullets. And steps taken. Mm -hmm. And also, we're going to be making some content updates because, as Leah noticed, that there are some content in like we want people to be able to view how their badge will appear in the gallery, and that right right now there's different content between the badge creation and how the badge appears in the gallery. So we're going to bring that uh, to consistency, and um, and then to answer your question, Leah. We're going to be able. We're going to make a badge editable until um, until someone applies for it. Cool. So I, I want to get big again, just for a second here at the end, which is how you you kind of know the. I mean, at DML there was this crazy science fair, and I, I was dizzy with all the badge 
stuff going on. How do you, what kind of um, conversation do you think you're adding to that, to that big badging conversation? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting that you, that you asked that. I think that badges are probably, I heard a lot less buzz at DML about badges this year than I did last year. And, um, and I think that there was a certain, there is a certain crest about the wave of like gamification and badges and behaviorism at DML last year. Uh, and, you know, I'm a student of Mitch Resnick's. Philip is, uh, you know, a fellow at the MIT Media Lab. We're committed, I mean, not to get like too high level education theory ish, but we're like committed to a project based constructionist point of view. And so we're really proud of what we built because we actually think it represents uh, a theory of learning and a point of view. And we think that it'll sustain badges. If, they are, if badges are a trend, they're a trend, but we've actually built a feedback mechanism that, that we're really proud of and that will you know, withstand time and we're, we're really excited to, people, to see people use it. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm, I, you know what, um, what's wonderful is that you can go to badges.p2pu.org and, and really understand the affordances mm -hmm. and you can feel, I can feel the learning philosophy behind it. So when I said you mess up with, you mess things up for us, I meant that as a compliment. So I, thank Paul, you for continuing. You right. are such a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> and so is Leah. Yeah. So Jane. Jane is Jane is just beginning to consider assessment for School of Open. So we're uh, we've got we've got a, a hill to climb in front of us, but it'll be a fun hill. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite things to say is when when other teachers say, "Well, how does the teacher you know stay in the the mix?" I just say, "You know, I'm a peer too, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, you know, as a teacher, I'm to become a, a student's peer is really an interesting thing to do." So um, thank you for all of that. Um, Jane, do you have any kind of final thoughts? Or Leah, I wanted to give both of you a chance to say something here. Um, I just want to add that Christina is uh, on the uh, chat board in That's the TTT Andrew? talk TED Talk area. Um, I'm not sure her last name, but she is Go listening. Ahead. And she wants to know if Vanessa and Dirk um, would mind posting or co-posting something at uh, I think it's her website, so I'm just going to paste. Is, I bet. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you okay. got it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in for you guys. And if you guys could follow up with her, um, and I will also send her your emails. There's a really great. We're, we're pretty proud of the walkthrough that we did uh, explaining um, how badges work. Uh, and I'll also put that in the chat. So if she'd like to cross post that. Um, yeah. There we go, uh, and um, and there's also a, a a link to the pedagogy behind badges, um, which is a lot of this set of slides. So um, and that's there as well. Leah, is your is your uh, PhD work around badges or? Um, I actually found a program that was interdisciplinary, so it's rooted in uh, social justice, and uh, people come from all over the place, and they kind of approach social justice through their lens. So, another key component for me is the how informal learning, do-it-yourself learning, and kind of these alternative forms of credit are also fulfilling um, kind of this this um, social justice aspect. I guess that I feel all humans are you know, feel drawn to and are partial to, you know, helping, helping each other. Everybody wants to help each other and um, make sure that, you know, I, I think there's a lot of things that can be said for open education, just those who can't afford it. Um, people who are already finished with a degree who need to catch up on their skills. And I think we're in an age where learning just doesn't stop at 16 or even 20. It keeps going and we, um, I think that's where higher education needs to think about expanding. A lot of um, 
you know, colleges, universities have uh, continuing ed, but the continuing ed programs just aren't servicing enough. They need to think about their alumni. They need to think about servicing also the community. And of course, I work at a Jesuit institution, so that's a huge component. Yeah, so that's what I'm interested in, how all of these areas converge and where the converging point is. <laughs> Well, it was great to meet you a little bit tonight. So great <laughs> and more. And Jane, you have any final thoughts? Um, no, just reiterating what I said in chat. Um, I actually had, haven't read the Badges Overview until this um, hour, and I'm I'm really kind of thrilled at the philosophy behind it. I think it fits very cool. perfectly with P 2 P U and School of Open Values. Um, I guess I just have certain concerns about the way that people have been talking about badges so far, and they're not people outside of PGPU, um, and they're not um, exactly how I envisioned it, how you guys have set it up, which I much more agree with and I'm more excited about than the badges I've seen and on other sites. So. And, and we're actually going to do a, a walkthrough. This is more of a con like a philosophical conversation, but we're actually going to do a walkthrough. Sorry about that. Oh, no, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> uh, but like, this will, we're going to do a boots on the ground walkthrough for School of Open. The people who want to uh, create badges, learn more about how it works, and we'll create badges together and like critique them. Uh, Jane is Jane is gonna uh, be at the helm of that, so um, so maybe we can try to connect people who are interested in this call also to the school open. Sure, just let us know. We can make that happen. Cool. Sure. Okay. So um, we um, meet usually. I just want to say here at the end, uh, this is uh, teacher teaching teachers, um, and we are uh, we broadcast here every Wednesday, usually at nine p.m. Eastern, um, six p.m. Pacific time, which um, you know we we moved this up and then uh, for Dirk and then he 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 uh, flew over. But so thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming in. Anyway, um, it's great to, to have you. Um, we um, we. Uh, our, we broadcast over the Ed Tech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network, and I want to thank Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo, um, who continue to mess around and make sure all that happens for us. Um, and uh, you can find this very quickly up on YouTube, but also um, at teachersteachingteachers.org. And we'll be back next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Um, um, and we're going to be talking about listening to students um, at that uh, on that show. So talk to you all again soon. Thank you so much. And thank we'll you. you. Thank you. You're the best, Paul. Thanks. Thanks.